wanna sail away. I wanna sail away. Hello, and welcome once again to, hopefully we can buy a boat so that we don't have to live in Lauren's parents' basement or at a campground. Round three. Round three. Rivers is doing some research on his tablet right now, so if you hear him uh, musing in the background, don't worry about it, it's all for a good purpose. <laughs> yeah, it's just checking boat prices. Yeah. So this is the third, like you said, video of the boats in our search for a new liveaboard sailboat in case you haven't been watching along at this point go back and check out the first couple of videos and you can see a little more detailed uh, list of our parameters and a little bit more about us and what we're doing so without further ado here is this week's boats it'll be in our here are this week's boats not here is this week's boats i'm just saying here are this week's boats all right this is the 2008 145 DS. It's got a ton of good stuff on it. With that BNR rig, which I'm still a little undecided about. Dinghy comes with it. So does the motor. Not crazy about the looks of a lot of hunters, but I like the looks of this one. I like the wraparound windshield and the sharper looks. Not quite so round as some of the older ones. Definitely a lot of room in the cockpit. Used to be the same as the other one. Bare head, which got a lot of storage. like the arch. The arch is pretty genius. No solar, just wind, satellite, it needs apparently some adjustment. Huh, that's weird. The decks are a little better than they are on the 49. You just saw the Hunter 49. You <laughs> just saw the Hunter 45 DS. And the pros were we liked the looks of it. We liked the cockpit. Had a really light interior. It was new, so it was a 2008. Uh, had a lot of extras. Decent side decks. Uh, cons. Pullman layout, which unfortunately just we've decided the two the two bedrooms is just not gonna work for us um, another con was that aft bedroom just didn't feel very roomy it was sort of you you could, I couldn't sit up in bed yeah you couldn't sit up in the bed this boat in particular had some issues with the bimini and just the overall space uh, it just didn't feel roomy enough generally price for this one was 189,000 so kind of toward the upper end of our, our budget this is the Beneteau 523. And she is a beast. 
This is probably bigger than we need to be, but it's a good price and it's a good looking boat. Looks nice. So we've seen so many big boats now that it doesn't yeah. look as daunting as I thought it might. The cockpit. The cockpit, that's right. Do you want to go on the cockpit? Yeah. Okay. No, Mom, but it's Dad. No, I'm coming. Okay. It's a big one. It's a big one. It's a big one, huh? It's a nice, uh, nice arch. Just a little bit of dinghy work. I'm just going to go ahead and go up on the deck real quick while I'm out here. I mean, the couch is there, but it's not a But that's what happens when you cram three bathrooms in a boat. Right. Like, it's just not necessary. Right. Because if you didn't have this... That's, that's basically, if you don't have a head on this side, then you can put the kitchen back in the corner right. and you get a bench. Oh, you do. Lift your hands. You're going to wash your hands? Even though we're just getting this tour underway, I just don't think this is just not the layout of the boat that we're looking for. Even though it's 53 feet long and 16 feet wide, you've got a whole crew quarters up in front of that bulkhead, which obviously would be good for storage, but it just wastes a lot of living space. And I wanted to get on a boat where we had this side galley just to see. Uh, I still think it's our. Put, it's not our jam. So we know where they are. You know, there's just there's two heads. There's another. There's one here. And there's one over there. And my thought would be to rip one of them out and use it. Use the extra space to make one of these bedrooms a bedroom slash office. But what I think the work required would be kind of a lot. And I don't know what it would look like. Not when it's already at the top of our yeah. Yeah. money wise. And then we'd have to do all this work to it. Well, I did say that I thought this would be a visit of elimination. Like it is. Yep. I do want to go see the crew quarters so though, just for kicks. I used to. Lauren's going in the hole. No bed or anything. Right, they're using it the way we would probably use it. Yeah. Or a storage room, which is cool. I mean, it's definitely. I mean, it is, it's big. It's very nice to have the the room, no doubt. It doesn't have a head though, does it? No. So, either they so like... that's good. It's more space than we need, I think. Never thought I'd say that. It's true though. It's a lot of, it's a lot of room that we were just paying for. Yeah, extra boat length to dock, extra yeah. boat length to pay for to haul it out, to work Clean on it, bottom. everything. Yeah. And I don't think it gives enough back for that. The gigantic Beneteau 523, uh, I believe this was a 2003 Audio Pros. Huge cockpit. I mean, everything about this boat was huge. That's a, another pro. Okay, hold on, mate. I'll, I'll continue. <laughs> cockpit had tons of room, uh, double wheels, of course. Um, had an arch, had a dinghy, had a very, very roomy interior. How could it not? Really nice woodwork. Had a sail locker outside to be able to throw fenders and extra sails and tools and cleaning material, uh, cleaning products and buckets and kid bikes. Yeah. So the cons, it had a bad layout for being so big. It was almost too big. They separated things, so it had the side galley that we don't like, and that's because they had this boat had three heads. So too many heads. Yeah. My next point. Uh, the side galley. All of the above. There was a lot of work that had to be done with it. It was a little rough and for being so big. So it was $220,000, which was already over our budget. What is a good price for a 523? Yeah. So we looked at it. Those are huge. <laughs> but for the work that we still had to put into it, it wasn't really feasible. And a lot of that work is to kind of fix that layout. It was so big that the price to dock it, to pull it out, to 
mm -hmm. uh, redo the bottom to it just, just didn't have clean yeah, yeah it didn't seem to add up just to have basically a sail locker all right we hey. are here looking at a hundred four sixty six got the whole gang That's beautiful. Very nice, but really, really nice shape. This one has a shortened mast, which I'm not crazy about, but it's really nice. This is very open. Oh, yeah. Look, your head's not touching. That's a real big. Yeah. Come on. Plenty of headroom. would be the river's room. There's a ton of room in here. Two thousand four Hunter 466. Now, I just want to say a little bit about these. There's the Hunter 460, the Hunter 466, and then the Hunter 46 LE are all part of the same line, same haul. So this one happens to be a 466, which is one of the later ones made, a 2004. Uh, the interiors are gradually nicer as these boats get newer. From the 466s forward, they have Kevlar hulls. Hunter 466, 2004. Pros. My, my Does writing's, that say great? Yeah, my writing's terrible. <laughs> great interior. Volume for the size of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> look, look at this writing. Can you see what it says? Great interior volume. It had new canvas and a really, really, really high nice canvas. Yeah. bimini and dodger. It had an arch and a dinghy, which were in great shape. Mm -hmm. It had a separate head and shower in the main um, V berth. It had nice woodwork. It was very clean. Basically, it was in perfect condition. It has my princess seats, which I love. Right. Yeah, and also the built-in office. Oh yeah, I missed that, that one. one. Yeah, that, I had an office. I guess I'll just kind of like work into the cons. Yeah. Um, because we didn't really want to look at these boats at first because they didn't have the cockpit that we were looking for with the double wheels and the, you know, it feels like a spacious, more modern cockpit. B&R rig, which is something I wanted to look into further, we am just not 100% sure about that. Um, and you already heard all the pros, which were a lot of them. Except for the last one. It had a great galley. It did. Cons, this particular boat had had its mast shortened from 63 feet, which is also already ICW friendly, down to 60. Our thinking is once you start messing with the mast and then you're messing with the sails and then you're messing the with the perform yeah. performance of, of everything. So we didn't like that at all. So that was really one of the few negatives. The single wheel like I just touched on, but once we got to looking at it, the cockpit really felt pretty nice to us. Instead of having a bench on one side, which most boats do, these have like two loungy chairs. And then yeah, just wanting to do more research on the B&R rig. So, that, we left this boat really interested in looking at more of these, so. This one was... 179. Yeah, 179, so. 2004, 166, 179. So, that does it for our research boats. Mm -hmm. 
Um, next week, we're going to give you a little uh, video of the Miami Boat Show, mm -hmm. where we went and looked at tons of boats that we can't possibly ever afford. And then after that, you're going to see the point at which we're starting to get real serious. It's no longer about research. We're actually hunting down boats to make offers on. Yeah. I actually make an offer on the next one. Yeah. Yeah, that video, there's there's gonna be a lot going on in the next few yeah. videos. So uh, it got crazy. <laughs> be prepared. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you for watching once again. Um, subscribe, ring the bell so you can get uh, notifications of all these videos. And of course give us a like. Give us a dislike if you want. We want you to Don't be honest. That. Don't do that. As you look through seasons I have come and gone And you wonder how we even made it this far As you look through seasons I have come and gone